Well, I want to thank the uh, panelists for being here today for your testimony um, and uh, having this conversation and thank the committee for having this hearing today. Um, maybe a question to all of the witnesses here. Um, arguably, we live in one of the most prosperous times in our modern history in terms of economically and where we're at, looking at all the measurements. And yet, uh, many people claim that having children is too expensive. Um, can, can any of you talk a little bit about what's going on there and, and maybe some of the reasons for that, or, or if there is some validity to that? Yeah, Mr. Bourne. Well, I think we have to split this issue into uh, thinking about how people exist with the costs that they face today and changed expectations over time. I agree with much of what uh, Mr. Stone said earlier in that if you look at the broad trends of costs of everyday basic goods and necessities over time and bundle up that basket of goods, actually the affordability of raising a family on fixed expectations about what you want to, to get or what you want to provide from your children um, in most areas and for most families hasn't gone up. But over time, people's expectations rise about what they want to deliver for their children. You want to invest in after-school clubs and activities. You want to provide them with the best uh, quality childcare available for you. So the amount that's actually spent by many families on children has risen. That's not to say that policy doesn't play a role in raising prices from what uh, prices could be in a, in a more market-friendly economy. And much of my research has been attempting to show that in key markets that occupy large uh, segments of families' budgets, particularly childcare and housing costs, there are big um, regulatory barriers which restrict supply of, of new goods such that when demand rises for childcare or demand rises for housing, there's not an adequate supply response. Uh, that manifests itself, as Mr. Stone said, in the housing market, mainly through uh, local zoning and land use planning laws, which are particularly per pernicious in many uh, growing metropolitan areas. Um, but in childcare, it also manifests itself through uh, staffing uh, regulations and occupational licensing, which uh, many parents in upper income quartiles desire that type of uh, improved quality from childcare, more interaction between staff and children and uh, better qualified staff. But when that's imposed as a policy across the state level, that has the effect of raising childcare prices and forcing many poorer families out of the formal childcare sector and into the informal childcare sector where we, we have uh, less idea of what quality is. So I guess to, to summarize that, that, that point, I agree with Mr. Stone that over the long term, if you wanted exactly the same expectations for your kids as 30 years ago, things have probably got more affordable. Our expectations change, um, and that means that over time people are spending more money on their families, and there are certain policies, particularly at a state and local level, which raise prices in those sectors. And is there a um, suggested policy change to help remedy that? Well, uh, my, the main point that I made in my testimony, uh, the, big, the two big ticket items are housing and childcare mm -hmm. for, for many families with young children. And uh, most of the positive regulatory changes that could be made uh, would primarily have to occur at the state and local level. Now, federal government policy can push in the right direction. Uh, I may not agree with all of the current federal subsidy programs and their existence, but to the extent that we're going to have them, um, greater conditionality, um, making sure that, that we're not rewarding bad policy by distributing uh, subsidies to areas that have very restricted supply sides in childcare and housing, I think is something that, that uh, congressmen and women should be looking at. 